All right, you might have caught this press conference yesterday, the continued outrage over the immigration bill. Uh, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham has some concerns. Uh, by the way, it, it, the likelihood of it even passing, very unlikely right now, uh, but it's still early. Immigration expert Elvira Salazar says the outrage is, is, is a bit overblown. Uh, why? I mean, this has turned into front page headline, crazy, crazy stuff. Bring us back to reality here, Elvira. What, what's really going on with this? Well, thank you. Thank you. You, all, you know, everything that has to do with immigration is always front uh, headline news uh, because it's the signature plank for President Trump. But I think that what Senator Graham is saying is, is, is true. Uh, and many in my community would agree with him. We want people to learn English. We want people to hold jobs. We want people not to live off welfare. Welcome the doctors and the computer scientists and the entrepreneurs. But the problem with this uh, project or this new initiative from the, uh, from the Trump administration is that it's just looking at one side, the high-skilled workers. What's happening with the low-skilled workers? The doctors and the entrepreneurs are not going to be picking up the jalapeno peppers in Southern California or cleaning the toilets in Manhattan. We need people like them as well. So, and what happens, um, and I think that he's pointed it out very clearly, is that if we do not address what the market needs, then illegals will start coming back, brought by the agricultural tycoons and by the construction moguls. And this, that's what's happening in Texas right now. Look at the construction boom. You know that there is, I think I said it here in your show last time I, I was invited, that there is a, an underground railroad system bringing in illegals from Mexico to lay the bricks and to carry the 4 by 4s in Texas. So it, 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 apparently the genesis of all this were a lot of tech CEOs who complain, and this goes back years, that there are not enough math and engineering students or qualified candidates in this country so they, they, they look for, you know, uh, the same skill set from Chinese workers or Indian workers, and they want more visas or green cards for them. And the push they had always argued is, we need to beat that up because we don't have enough of those skill sets here. But I thought that's improved lately, that we do have more such students with, with, with such backgrounds, and that this is just an excuse on the part of these companies to get the same skill set for less money. And I agree with you. And we know that the H-1B is in boy, I think that's what you're mentioning, has been extremely abused. We've given 85,000 H-1Bs. Absolutely. And I think we should find uh, in, in, a, in a very robust manner those companies that are abusing the system. And if the American boy that graduated from University of Virginia has those credentials, he needs to be hired. Absolutely, because we all live here. But how so, does that uh, compare, Elvira, to what they always quote uh, Australia and Canada? At first, when I first heard this, they're English speaking countries. But what the administration was talking about, these are countries that have these similar standards on who they pick to, to get citizenship or to get even temporary visas or the equivalent in those countries of green cards, that these procedures are in place. What do they do that we're trying to emulate? Well, what we're trying to do here, I think that uh, we should uh, backtrack a little bit. What I think the administration is doing is trying to scratch the 1965 immigration law, family chain immigration, which I agree that should be revised, should be tweaked. It's not possible that 70 percent of the people that have come to this country in the last 50 years are the only, the most important requisite is because they know somebody or that they have a family member. That, that needs to be revised. So that's what Australia and Canada is doing. But we should do it with a heart. Uh, and, and that's where we need to, and then on top of that, not, not just going to the, uh, to the compassion. Also, the vulnerability of compassion is what we are suffering because we are such a great nation that we have welcomed many people. But now it's time to take a look at it. I'm, I'm not, and I'm sure that millions in my community agree with what I'm telling you. Because remember, we also pay taxes. And we don't want other Hispanics to be living off welfare, living off you and me. But isn't that so, the way it used to be in this country? Like if you, like my parents, um, one set from Ireland, the other uh, from, from Italy, the requirement was at the time that you had to have someone here to support you because the government wasn't going to do it. You had to have a good prospect for a job. And I believe the third criteria, you couldn't have any disease. If you had any disease or problems, you were shipped back, literally. So. Well, I come from the same group as so, you. So My parents, we're returning to what we came. were, right? Yes, absolutely. 
prior 1965. Okay. Just that between now and 60, between 65 and now, the law has been relaxed once again because we are our, the, the best country in the world and we are very compassionate, regardless of what people outside of the United States say. So what I'm saying is that I think Senator Graham, what he's trying to advise is just to tweak the law, but also look at the market, what the market needs. Right. We could avoid all this immigration problem if we could sit down both parties and then say, okay, this is what the moguls need and this is what we stand for as, as the United States. And then they create a, you know, a, a, an immigration reform law with both parties sitting down at the table. That's what we need, not this, this little by little, just this little here and that little there. Yeah, and, and calling each other names, it's not productive. Um, yeah, while you're here, waste Elvira, of time. I want, yeah, I wanted to pick your brain very quickly on Venezuela. What's going on down there? It seems to be erupting in the civil war. I have quite a few friends in Colombia nearby, and they're getting yeah. worried about it. Um, what do you make of it? Absolutely. All this? I went, to, I went to school, I went to Harvard, the John F. Kennedy School of Government with Leopoldo Lopez, who for me is a hero. He's giving his life literally for his country. I think that the Venezuelans are fighting for their lives um, and for their democracy. You know, we have to remember that Venezuela has one of the uh, most robust and one of the longest democracies in, Amer in the Americas. And, but, you know, the Chavez came and he, he was following Havana line, trying to create paradise on earth. Uh, and that's what communists and socialists sell to the masses and look, look where they are now. So they're basically fighting and we, the United States, we need to apply the nuclear option, which is stop buying Venezuelan oil. And that regime will collapse in a minute because we're their number one partner. If we don't pay for that oil, 70% of the Venezuelan oil is bought by the United States. So, hmm. well, then you sell it to China. <laughs> There and then let's see what happens. All right. Elvira, it's always good having you. You're a great guest. You know that? Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, sir. Elvira Salazar.